Color me not shocked. Hello, this is Mara Jade, and I'm back with another video, and according to this article on the WashingtonExaminer.com, Disney executive admits to passing on well-written scripts that lack diversity. Surprise, surprise. Is anyone genuinely taken aback at this revelation? Is anyone truly taken aback? I would have to guess not, given the quality or lack thereof coming from Disney nowadays. But, at any rate, let's go into this article so we can see what this Disney executive is saying. So, here it is, folks. A Disney executive said the company has passed on well-written television shows that did not meet its inclusivity and diversity standards. Shocker. Dana Walden, Walt Disney Television's chairman of entertainment, said that the network declined to pick up a show about a white family in which diversity would come from the supporting characters. Well, God fucking forbid. Quote, That's not going to get on the air anymore because that's not what our audience wants, Walden told Time contributor Janice Min at an April panel discussion hosted by Chapman University and Glamour. That's not a reflection of our audience and I feel good about the direction we're moving. Yes, that's not a reflection of your audience because your audience is the Twitter outrage mob uh, virtue signaling for brownie points. That's what your audience pretty much has become nowadays. It's not the general movie going and television watching audiences that only care about good stories, that only care about good characters, and the good characters go more than skin deep qualities of skin color, gender, and sexuality. The qualities extend beyond those superficialities into hopes, dreams, moral compasses, thoughts, actions, and so forth. That's what people relate to. That's what normal people relate to. They don't care about the character's skin color, gender, or sexuality. They don't care about those. That's not what people relate to. If you can only relate to a character based on one of those three qualities, then you are superficial yourself. But that's not what a majority of the audience wants. However, that's what a majority, a majority of the minority yelling at the top of their lungs that Disney is pandering to. That's the audience that this executive is talking about. That's the audience that only cares about the superficial qualities. They're the ones who raise the pitchforks and storm the doors if none of those three at all is at the forefront of the, of the character. It doesn't matter anything else about the character. All that matters is using those characters, using minority characters as quotas. That's all it amounts to, pretty much. That's what representation, diversity, and inclusivity has been reduced to, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the current Disney audience right now that they are pandering to. Disney has shit the bed, and they're lying it happily. Based on this quote, they're happily lying in the shit they put in the bed. Good job, Disney. You're not too big to fail. You're not too big to fail. Moving on, ABC, which is owned by Walt Disney, unveiled diversity standards in September, which are intended to make the company's content as inclusive as possible. According to Simran Sethi, the company's executive vice president of Deve development and content. As inclusive as possible. Quotas. That's what it amounts to. Quotas. We want to take this moment to evaluate systems and habits in an effort to remove barriers to access and opportunity. Take responsibility. Sethi wrote in an email to producers, showrunners, casting directors, and executives. It's important for us to look around the room, assume responsibility, check your white privilege, see who's not there, and then take the steps to not only bring them in, but also set them up for success. Act as white saviors, pretty much. That's the gist of that comment right there. Among other standards, the guidelines include requirements for 50% of actors and 50% of characters on ABC programs to represent underrepresented groups. These people want the characters to reflect the, uh, the state of the country we're living in. If they truly, if they truly understood that comment whenever they peddle that bullshit... They would know that this country is still majority white. This country is still a majority um, those of like primarily European descent. So, guess what? Most shows would be uh, centered around white characters. Since they only wanted to reflect um, the superficial qualities of skin color, gender, and sexuality. 
pretty much. For skin color, it would be major majority white. For gender, it would be 50-50 because there are only two fucking genders, roughly. And for sexuality, well, guess what? Still in a tiny minority. If they act at all understood when they said they wanted to be an accurate reflection on the state of the country we're living in. But they don't. They don't. It's all about virtue signaling. It's all about pandering. It's all about using these people, these characters, as quotas, as props to pander to audiences that really do not give a shit at all about an IP or other uh, intellectual um, franch franchise, I should say. They don't care. They never truly were invested in it until, until uh, the companies started listening to them and not the existing customers. That's it. And I'm all about bringing in new fans. I'm all about bringing in new fans. But when those fans start making demands on what the intellectual property should encompass, what the characters should be, what they want to see should come at the forefront, at the uh, front of the line, as opposed to the people who've invested time and money into the property... I have a problem with that. And that's the people these uh, companies are pandering to. The document outlines similar standards for directors, producers, writers, and other crew members. Basically, hire based on skin color. Let's fight racism by hiring based on skin color. You're judging them based on their skin color. How is that fighting racism? You're hiring them based on their gender. You're judging them based on their gender. How is that not sexism? Because it's in a positive connotation? Well, sexism is sexism regardless of the connotation. Positive or negative. You're still judging based on that quality. You're still judging based on skin color. So, positive or negative, it's still racism. Walden also announced that Hulu, an online streaming service that Disney acquired a majority stake in after purchasing 21st Century Fox, will debut programming specifically created for ethnic minority audiences. The effort, led by Tara Duncan, the president of Freeform, will feature content created by minority storytellers and will be curated by executives of color and high-level leaders at Disney. Good job, Disney. In the wake of the death of George Floyd and the nationwide Black Lives Matter marches that followed. Um, there were some marches. I love how you lump in the riots and the looting as part of the marches. Television networks have made concerted efforts to increase programming targeted at ethnic minorities and to increase minority representation in cast and production staffs. Quotas. Quotas. That's all they've been reduced to. For the 2021-2022 television season, CBS pledged to spend 25% of its development budget on productions created by people of color. By the 2022-2023 season, the network aims to have 50% of the staff in its writers' rooms identify as people of color. Identify as people of color. Identify! There's the key fucking word right there. Guess what? Guess what? If someone like me goes in and says they identify... As a, let's put it this way, let's say uh, an African American, Rachel Dazel, ring a bell? You can't, you can't turn them back. You can't turn them back because then you would, you would be going against what you just said right there. Right there. People who identify as people of color. That's it. That's fucking it. Right there. There's a the loophole, ladies and gentlemen. Go apply. Go apply, say you identify as a particular person of color. Watch them try to spin the wheels. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the article. Oh, there it is. So basically, are we really surprised at all by this? Are we re really shocked at this revelation? Look at what Disney's put out the past... A uh, few years or so. Look at the content Disney has put out. Look at the uh, actions that Disney has taken. Now, I don't watch The Mandalorian, but look at what they did to Gina Carano. Look at what, how they bowed to the Twitter outrage mob. That's their audience. Like I said, that's the audience that they're pandering to. That's the audience that they ho think will be watching these programs, but don't really give a fucking shit about them. 
there it is. But let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you shocked? Not shocked? Do you agree with their actions? Do you disagree with their actions? Let me know all that down in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up. Share on social media if you will. I will be hopefully back on Twitch uh, Friday evening instead of Saturday evening for another Twitch stream. I have yet to decide what game I want to play because I'm going to leave that up to a Twitter poll after the first poll I put out on Twitter ends. So if you follow me on Twitter, look for that poll. It's what I'm going to wear. What you guys want me to wear on my Twitch stream this Friday. So if you haven't voted, go find that uh, post and uh, vote in that poll. And then after that, I'm going to do another poll of what game do you want me to play this Friday evening while wearing said choice from my followers. So if you uh, like, share, and subscribe, follow me on Twitter and on Twitch, Jade underscore Fire. For more Twitch-related content, this is Mara Jade. Catch you on the dark side, and fuck you, Disney.